as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches, back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker Pup wheat and Quaker Pup rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Say, are you game for a dare? Who, me? Sure I am. What's up? Well, then, tomorrow morning, try a breakfast of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat topped with milk or cream and fruit. Boy, I just dare you to say it doesn't hit the spot. These ready-to-serve king-sized kernels of premium wheat or rice are shot from guns. Yes, Quaker Puff rice and Quaker Puff wheat are actually exploded up to eight times normal size. That's why they're so crisp, tender, delicious. Tomorrow, just you try this breakfast treat. Quaker Puff rice or Quaker Puff wheat. The girl watched the big black-bearded man put on his parka. She stood with her back to the door, her fists clenched, her lips trembling. Stand aside, Nancy. I'm leaving. Please, Uncle John. Please let me go with you. No. If I'm to carry a full load of supplies, I can't carry a passenger. I'll be all alone. There's nothing can hurt you if you keep the door barred. At least wait until morning. Please wait until morning before you go. If I do that, then I won't be back by tomorrow night. You're being ridiculous. I can't help it. I'm afraid. If I see it again, I don't know what I'll do. Nancy, I thought we'd agreed that you'd see nothing. Maybe an hallucination, as you say, but it's real to me. You persist in this evil imagining? All I know is that if I'm with you, I won't see it. I'm sure of that. Are you trying to make me believe that you're losing your mind? I don't know. Maybe I am. Those strange, gleaming eyes. Those jaws. That ghostly body and cry, mournful howl like a lost soul. Stop it. I have no sympathy with your hysteria. If it isn't real, don't you understand? That makes it even worse. I only understand that when you were a child, that Indian nurse filled your brain with stories about werewolves. Now, since your father is dead and you don't wish to remain with me here in the camp, isn't that let at all. me finish. You want me to stay here and work the mine so you can live in ease. In San Francisco or New York. No, no, Uncle John. So you've invented this stupid, childish story of a white wolf pursuing I you. I swear I saw it. It was coming after me. I made you take me back to where you saw it. You remember that? There were no tracks except those made by your dog team. All right. I'll admit again that I was wrong. Only don't, don't leave me alone here. You must conquer this weakness. I can't. You must. I'll tell you this, Nancy. That if you don't, I'll take you away from here. You will. And I'll have you locked up in an institution for the insane. But I'm not, I'm not. You're trying to make me believe you are? Haven't you any sympathy, any pity? No. Nothing but profound disgust. And my father was your brother. Are you accusing me of forgetting that? Only that After I... coming here, after working the mine for I you? I didn't mean What that. do you mean? Nothing. Nothing. Are you going to behave... I'll try. Then stand aside. I'm leaving. Oh, Uncle John. Good night. A moment later, the girl heard the team start away from the cabin. With a great effort, she controlled her sobbing. She turned the lamp low and then went to bed. But it was impossible for her to sleep. She lay staring at the ceiling, waiting. An hour passed. Two hours. And then a strange, unearthly howl drifted down from the top of the canyon. Oh, only a wolf. An ordinary wolf. I won't look. I won't. If I see it again. Oh, father. Father. 
The howl was heard again, <laughs> closer this time. The girl sat upright. And then mechanically, as if some force outside herself were driving her on, she rose from her bed and started for the window. She closed her eyes for a second when she reached it. And then she opened them and stared out into the night. A white animal was racing down the trail from the mine toward the cabin door. <laughs> closer and closer. The girl could see the flash of green eyes. The animal hurled itself at the door of the cabin. And the girl dropped to the floor unconscious. <laughs> A distant whistle. The animal howled again and raced back up the trail. The night was quiet once more. It was nearly an hour later. A team swung into the opening of the canyon from the creek trail. The great dog, King, was working his loose lead, and Sergeant Preston rode the sled. On, King! On, you husky! The team raced toward the cabin, and there the sergeant called on them to stop. Oh, King! Fire, husky! Fire! King, this must be the place. What's the matter, boy? Well, don't worry, I have my gun ready. That was a lamp lit. Must be someone inside. I'll take a look through the window. A girl, King, lying on the floor. Door's probably barred. I'll try to force this window. Good. One boy. Huh, seems to have fainted. I got her back in bed. Um. There. A little brandy will help if I can get her to drink it. No. No. Here, try to drink this. I'll hold you up. <coughs> That's it. What's the matter? The wolf, he's trying to break down the door. Well, there's no wolf around here. What? Look, I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. I just drove up. Saw you lying on the floor, so I came through the window. It wasn't there. I didn't really see it. You may have seen a wolf before I got here. You must have fainted. No, I didn't actually see it. There's no wolf like that. It's the werewolf the Indians used to talk about, and I'm dreaming it. I'm going crazy, just like Uncle John said. Here, now, wait a minute. There's nothing crazy about you, young lady. There's no such thing. It doesn't exist. White, those awful green Take eyes. Take it easy. I've seen wolves that seem to be white in the moonlight. But you don't find any tracks from this one. I thought I saw him jump against the door. You're Nancy Harrow, aren't you? What? How do you know me? I used to know your father. He's dead. I heard that he died. I'm very sorry. Now there's only Uncle John... I think he hates me. Your Uncle John is here? He's gone to the post for supplies. He left me alone. Nancy, I'm going to have to ask you quite a few questions, but before I do that, I'm going to make you a good, strong cup of tea. Will you drink it for me? If you... If you want me to, let me make it. All right. That's a good idea. As the girl made tea, the sergeant and King went outside the cabin and investigated the trail that ran up the canyon to the mine... When they entered the cabin again, the tea was waiting on the table, and the girl had already started to drink her cup. You didn't find any tracks, did you? There are a lot of tracks, Nancy. I'll admit that King didn't act as if there'd been a wolf around, but you might have seen a dog, a white dog. No. But please, I, I don't want to talk about it. All right, we won't. Hmm, this is fine tea. It does taste good. You feeling better? Yes. Ready to talk a little? As long as it isn't about that. It's about your father and your Uncle John. Why did Dad have to die? Were you left all alone here then? Not for long. Dad had already written to Uncle John. He was on his way when it happened. When did he arrive? About two months ago. He's working the mine himself? Yes, all by himself. He fired the men that Dad had working for him. I see. Nancy, uh, had you ever met your uncle before he came here? No. Ever seen his picture? Oh, yes. Really? I have one right here in the table drawer. It's a tintype of Dad and Uncle John when they were about my age. Here. Thank you. And you were able to recognize your uncle when he arrived from this picture? Well, he's changed. He's so much older and he, he has a beard. He seemed to look more like Dad in this picture. I see. You said he didn't like you. He doesn't think I appreciate what he's doing for me. Working the mine and everything... Lately, since I saw that thing, 
Well, he says I'm going crazy. You own the mine, don't you, Nancy? I suppose so. Do you have any other relatives besides your Uncle John? No. Well, I'm going to have to tell you something. It'll be a surprise and a shock. But you must remember that your father had friends, Nancy. And his friends are your friends. I'm one of them. I'm glad. My dear, your Uncle John is dead. What? Tonight? Something happened to him tonight after he left here? No, not tonight. He died over two months ago. But that's impossible. I mean... Oh, I am going crazy. Nothing of the sort. Your uncle was shot, and I have reason to believe that the man who's been pretending he's your uncle is the man who shot him. Pretending? Yes, Nancy. Uh, There's no need for you to know all the details. It isn't a pleasant story. But I'm going to take you with me down to Dawson, where you can live with some people who will be kind to you. Will you, Sergeant? You can start getting your things together and... I don't like to leave you alone. Oh, please don't. But I'll have to for a little while, Nancy. There's work I must do tonight. What's the matter, King? It's the werewolf again. I don't think so. Not a man who's taken the form of a wolf, but a wolf in the form of a man. Get down, Nancy, on the floor, under the table. All right, Sergeant. We'll continue our story in just a moment. You know, fellas and girls, I was out walking one night. It was a beautiful night, full moon and everything. And, well, sir, maybe you won't believe it, but here's what happened. Hello, down there. For a moment, I didn't realize who was talking to me. Hello. Then I saw him. Say, aren't you... Yes, I am the man in the moon. Gee, I've often seen you, but this is the first time I've ever had the pleasure of talking to you. I don't talk to everyone. But why favor me, Mr. Man in the Moon? I want to compliment you. About what? About giving all the boys and girls such good advice. You mean telling them to eat a good breakfast and that nothing tastes sweller than delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit? Precisely. Well, I don't want to brag, but I must admit that wheat or rice shot from guns are exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. They're shot through and through with keen nut-like flavor. They're crisp, they're tender. What's more, I think it's important to tell all the fellows and girls that Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are good for them. They furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Good advice, that. But say, Mr. Man in the Moon, how do you know so much about wheat or rice shot from guns? We don't sell Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice up there on the moon. I am old and wise. The man in the moon knows many, many things. Well, that's all for now. Goodbye. Well, sir, fellas and girls, what do you know about that? One thing, though, and this is for sure. Unlike the man in the moon, you can always enjoy nourishing, tasty breakfasts of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice morning after morning. Grocers everywhere down here have crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns. But mind you, it's never sold in bags or bulk. Always look for the famous big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. That way you're sure to get the original, the one and only, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Now to continue our story. Sergeant Preston pulled Nancy to the floor just as the rifle bullet crashed through the window and smashed the lamp on the table. In the darkness, the sergeant and the girl listened, but there was no other sound from outside. Then... Matt must have changed his mind about going to the post. Matt? Matt Bennett, the man you've been calling Uncle John. Tell me, Nancy, have you seen any other men around here? No. Where'd the men who used to work here live? There's some cabins beyond the mine near the top of the canyon. Huh? How far? Oh, that's about half a mile. The mine's about halfway between here and there. What's the mine like? Describe it to me. There's nothing unusual about it. It's an old mine. The main shaft goes right through the hill. Two entrances. It would be possible to get into it without being seen from here. The other side. I understand. How many tunnels leading off from the main one? Four. But three of them are boarded up. Mm. Where are you going? You're not going outside. No, only to the window. Can you see anyone? Come here, Nancy. What is it? Keep down low. 
Now look in the direction I'm pointing. All right. Can you see a man in the shadow of that rock? Yes. At least I can see something. You can make out the parka he's wearing. Yes, it isn't, Uncle. It isn't Matt Bennett. Sergeant, he's standing up. He's coming this way. I know. He has a rifle. Yes, I know. Keep down. He'll shoot again. I'm not giving him any target. Get back under the table again. All right, Sergeant. What's he doing? Still walking toward the cabin. I have him covered. That's far enough. Drop your rifle. Not me. Now will you drop it? Yeah. Now don't shoot again. You cut me in the arm. Come on. Walk straight to the door. All right. Nancy, I have to keep him covered. Run to the door and unbar it and get back out of the way. I will. Another lamp around? Yes. Light it, will you? Of course. All right, you. Step inside. Might as well shoot and get it over with. Where do you want the lamp? On the table, please. Hey, are you not Matt? You're Sergeant Preston. That's right, bud. So, so it was Matt who wanted to kill. He had it coming to him. Close the door, Nancy, and bar it again. Yes, Sergeant. Sit down, Dan. I'll take a look at your arm. You drilled it clean. I'll help you off with your parka. Oh, ow. Some antiseptic and some clean cloth, Nancy? I'll get some. You're under arrest, of course, Dan. Now we're adding attempted murder to bank robbery. I didn't get a penny out of that job. Matt got it all. How'd you manage to trace him here? How did you? A man named John Harrell was found at the bottom of a ravine, murdered. I didn't have anything to do with that. But you found out about it. Sure. Here you are, Sergeant. Oh, thank you, Nancy. <laughs> Dolly told me what Matt was up to. Huh? Coming up here to take over this mine. Pretending he was a dead man. Moving in with his gang, hiding out and working the mine at the same time. Uh, Easy. Where is he, though? Where's he gone? Where are the rest of them? Well, that's what I'm going to find out as soon as I finished with you. Could they be in the mine, Sergeant? It's possible, Nancy. Dan, uh-huh. there's one of them called Roof. Uh, Didn't he own a wolf dog with a white coat? Uh, that's right. A killer. Roof's the only one who could handle him. He's been seen around here. The werewolf? The animal I saw? Yes, Nancy. I didn't imagine it after all. No. There you are, Dan. Uh, thanks. Don't thank me. I'm going to tie up your feet and handcuff your good hand to this chair. Is there any rope around, Nancy? Yes, on the shelf. Oh, yes, I see it. When did Matt plan to get back here? Tomorrow night. We'll investigate the mine right away. Put your feet together, Dan. That's it. Close it out. All right. Now the handcuffs. There. Nancy... I'm going out and get Dan's rifle. You know how to use it, don't you? I can't shoot very straight. You won't have to. After I've gone, I want you to put out the lamp and stand guard by the window. Yes. There's a moon and you can see down the canyon to the creek trail. Now, if you see anyone at all, I want you to fire three times in the air. I'll get back here just as fast as I can. You're going up to the mine? First, I'll get the rifle. Come on, King. The sergeant gave Nancy the rifle and left her on guard at the window. A few minutes later, he and King reached the entrance to the mine. One boy, inside. The sergeant was carrying a hurricane lantern, its faint light hardly touching the walls and ceiling of the main tunnel. Think this is a strange place for men to be living, King? Well, if they were using the cabins at the top of the canyon, Nancy would have seen them. This is about the only other place they could live. What's that growl mean? That there is someone in here? All right, boy, you lead the way. King headed straight through the tunnel, past one boarded-up shaft, then another, and a third that was evidently being worked. He reached a fourth tunnel leading off the main one, and here he stopped and looked up at his master. The shaft had been boarded up as well, and now the boards had been torn away and left in a pile beside the opening. This it, King? Go on, boy. As they started down the tunnel, they heard the wolf dog howling ahead of them. I'd better put out this lantern, King. Now, in total darkness, they crept forward. The wolf dog howled again. A man shouted at him to be quiet. And the howling faded into a growl and died away. The sergeant and King kept on until something barred their way. But, uh, feels like a wall, King. Wait, it's giving. There's a door in it. As the sergeant slowly opened the door, he could see a faint glow, the light from an oil stove. The tunnel widened beyond the door, and along one wall were three bunks. There was a table against the other wall, and it was to this the wolf dog was tied. The sergeant leveled his gun at the three blanket-covered figures in the bunks. You're under arrest in the name of the queen. 
But at that moment, with a terrific effort, the wolf dog broke his leash and leaped. Sergeant. King met the dog's attack. But in the next second, the men had rolled from their bunks. And the fighting dogs in the narrow entrance, leaping and snarling, gave them cover from the sergeant's guns. The man opened fire. The sergeant himself, afraid of hitting King, dropped to the ground outside the open door. King was calling on all his superb strength to meet the wolf dog's furious onslaught. Who's out there, Rube? Simone is trying to arrest us. Get him! I can't get a shot. The dogs are in the way. Forget the dog. Shoot for the doorway. In a moment of crisis, a man acts by instinct. Suddenly, as the wolf dog leaped high in the air to escape King's jaws, a shot caught him. He dropped to the floor, and King was standing alone facing the outlaws. The sergeant leaped to his feet. All right, here I am. Let's see if you can hit me. As soon as the sergeant offered himself as a target to draw the fire from King, he threw himself against the wall and dropped to the ground again. Luck was with him. A projecting rock gave him some cover, and he pulled King down beside him. In the instant he had stood erect, he had placed one of his opponents in a far corner. Now he fired. Oh, he got me, Ruth. Go oh, get him. Bullets chipped the rock in front of the sergeant. He held his own fire until he was certain of the second outlaw's position. And then... Oh, ben, ben hit me. There was a lull filled only with the groaning of the second man who had been hit. If the rock in front of the sergeant gave him protection, it also prevented him from getting a shot at the third outlaw. Then he heard him making a break for the other side of the rocky room. Two guns flashed in the dark. The outlaw's bullet cut through the shoulder of the Mounties parka, but the sergeant's caught the man in the leg and he crashed to the floor. You had enough? Yeah. Then don't make a move. How can I? The sergeant lit his lantern and advanced into the room. It was Ruth who had been hit in the leg. Potter was clutching a shattered wrist, but it was only Ben who had been hurt seriously. The sergeant gave him first aid after collecting all the guns. Am I going to die? No, you're going to jail. Why? What's the charge against us? You don't have to be told. The charge is murder. We didn't have anything to do with that. Still, you know what I'm talking about. We didn't kill John Harrow. I warn you. Anything you say may be used against you. You can't use the truth against us. We, We didn't do it. We tried to stop Matt. I swear, Sergeant. Sure, we meant to rob Harrow, but that's all. We'll see what a judge and jury believes. What's the matter, King? King had suddenly leaped to his feet and started for the door. Then he ran back to his master. Did you hear something I didn't, boy? Once more, the dog ran to the door. Listen, did any of you three hear some shots tonight? We heard plenty. I mean from outside. You can't hear anything from outside in here. But you heard something just now, didn't you, King? All right, boy. Hold out your good hand, Potter. What are you going to do? I'm handcuffing you to roof so you'll be here when I get back. You're leaving. Aren't you going to do anything for my leg? That can wait until I get back. You will come back, your promise. We'll tell the truth about Matt. I'll be back. You can depend on it. Let's go, King. <laughs> Matt Bennett was just stopping his team in front of the cabin. Oh, oh there. Whoop. Oh. Nancy, what are you doing with that rifle? Why did you fire those shots? I didn't know who you were. Who does this other team belong to? Who's in there with you? Why have you come back? Because I took the ridge trail to the crossroads. The trapper who lives there said two men drove up the creek in this direction. Have you seen anything of them? Where'd this team come from? There's a man inside here with me. I shot him. I took him prisoner. What? Unbar the door and let me in. No, I won't. I'll shoot you. Drop that rifle, you little fool. Drop it and open the door or I'll shoot no, you. please. Do as I say. All right. Where is he? In the chair by the table. Light the lamp. Now we'll see. Damn Bledsoe. Yeah. Well, it's been a long time. Yeah, it has. You let this kid take you prisoner and tie you up? What does it look like? I don't believe it. What are you trying to hide there with your left hand? Nothing. Handcuffs. Mm. Two men, the trapper said. One of them was a Mountie. He's the one who tied you up this way. Nancy, where is he? I don't know. Dan, what'd you tell him? Nothing he didn't know already. What? Nothing Dolly didn't tell me. Dolly? That... Nancy, where's that Mountie? Let go of my wrist. I'll break it if I have to. Where is he? You'll find out soon enough. You're not my uncle. You're a crook and a killer. Yeah, he's gone to the mine. That's it. The 
Well, if Roof doesn't take care of him, I'll be waiting for him when he comes out. Huh. But first, I'm going to take care of you two, just so there won't be any loose ends lying around this time. Nancy, you don't feel like saying, Uncle, you're not going to say anything at all. You call me crazy. You're the one who's crazy. I'll show you. No, don't shoot me. All right, uh, up with your hands, you're covered. Who? Sergeant Preston at the window. We'll see who's covered. No! Put it down, Nancy. Oh, I have it. Oh, my arm. No. Pat Bennett, you're under arrest in the name of the Queen for the murder of John Harrell. And just as sure as there's justice in the Yukon, you'll hang for your crimes. Oh, Sergeant. It's all right, Nancy. You don't have anything at all to be afraid of anymore. I fired three times. I thought you didn't hear the shots. I didn't hear the shots, but King did. That's why we're here. That's why the case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Remember... Here's the breakfast that wins the praise of so many He-Man Hollywood movie stars. It's nutritious, delicious, quicker puffed wheat or quicker puffed rice. You, too, will go for wheat or rice shot from guns. You'll want to try them starting tomorrow. Say, fellas, do you go for basketball, baseball? You like to attend gym? Want to learn to swim? Boy, I bet every one of you does. And I'm sure many of you fellows are interested in music, dramatic clubs, and learning real trades like carpentry. Well, that's what boys' clubs offer boys age 8 to 20. Ask your parents if your town has a boys' club. Remember, the boys' club is your club. All boys are welcome. The clubs are sponsored by non-sectarian, non-profit organizations of public-spirited adults who operate the clubs for the benefit of the boy members. So here's a big hand to the boys' clubs of America and the wonderful work they're doing in building the citizens of tomorrow. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King... Meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case, Trouble at Forty Mile. When the inspector at Dawson City asked me to take King and go to Forty Mile because of trouble there, we had no idea of the mysterious happenings that had been going on. We ran into plenty of trouble, and the mystery of the locked cabin almost had me stumped and almost cost the constable his life. Believe me, I was thankful King was with me on that case. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. Boys and girls, can you guess what your dog likes best? That's right, meat. That's why over one million cans of kennel ration are sold every week. Because kennel ration is made with lean red meat. Choice cuts of U.S. government inspected horse meat. Have mom open a can. She'll like the appetizing aroma. And you will actually see the chunks of meat. And kennel ration has all the vitamins and minerals that help keep dogs in top health. Have mom get kennel ration today. Kennel ration, first in canned dog food. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.